Welcome to the Colerain Township Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services. This is a day in the life of a firefighter. My name is Robert Relag. I'm the Special Projects Manager for the department and it'll be my pleasure to help you understand what we do every day to serve you, the citizens of Colerain Township, better and make it safer for you one home at a time. My name is Eric Riefenberger with Colerain Township Fire Department. What we have here, you see some of these tubes dangling from the ceiling. It's actually an exhaust system for our uh, diesel trucks here in the bay. Um, it's actually called the Magna Grip system. Uh, we use these, they actually by magnet attach to the exhausts of all the vehicles inside the bay. Basically, once the vehicles turn on, it keeps us from inhaling any of the, uh, the diesel fumes which as uh, we figured out through the years is obviously a cancer risk. Most of our stations have this system, and if they don't, in the near future they will. It'll automatically turn on once a vehicle goes on and stays on until uh, the vehicle detaches. Yeah, just another kind of a hazard to us is cancer. Many things that we do in the department as far as uh, risk with cancer and um, as far as making sure we have clean PPE or protective equipment, turn out gear, uh, make sure that it's cleaned after every fire. Uh, we have certain machines that are uh, meant to wash. Uh, they're called extractors that are wash uh, the, the turnout gear uh, for any contaminants that we may uh, have during any types of structure fires or dealing with car accidents, uh, with diesel fuel and things like that, or, or uh, any gasoline. One of the many risks that we have in the fire service, uh, we try to take care of with, you know, the obvious, the uh, exhaust system here in the bay. So just like any other home, every, we have a kitchen that we prepare food. So typically on a daily basis here at this station, there's nine to 10 people, sometimes 11. And we have a lot, a lot of people to cook for. So, so we have the commercial sized oven here, which you know obviously um, makes it worthwhile for cooking for a lot of people. Uh, usually pretty well taken care of. What we end up doing is when we're cooking meals, we'll go through and clean it. Lunch is at noon, dinner's at six. And we try to keep to that every shift and uh, everybody knows that. Hi, so my name is Mindy Antolini. I'm a paramedic here at Colerain Township Fire Department. I work mostly at our headquarters station, station 25. And usually I'm on the front bus. So this is our medic unit. Uh, for today. When I first come in in the morning, I make sure that all of my equipment is ready. I come in, make sure my actual gear is on the truck, ready to go. Um, my boots, my coat, my helmet, so that I can keep safe for myself and for you. So all of our unit here, I go through each cabinet in our unit as we go. Uh, make sure that all of our supplies, I've been here for several years, so know what our supplies are, but I want to make sure that all of our batteries are charged, make sure all of our units are there, all of our equipment is there. We go through each cabinet individually to make sure that everything's there. We kind of check, as you can see, green light. Green means go, we're good to go. So when I come to see any of you that I have you called 911, I, my very first thing I bring in is my first in bag. This is an important bag because all of my basic equipment's in there if you're having any types of trouble breathing. I've got my airway stuff. I make sure that I have my mask, all of my equipment is in the inside. This is my quick equipment, anything that I need quickly inside of a house. It's right here. We carry this in, do our basic skills. If we need more, then we can always come back out here. A lot of times you might see our monitor here. As we talked about, we want to make sure that all of our equipment works correctly. Every morning I change the batteries, and as you can see up here, green lights mean they're good to go. This is what we do in case we need it. All it does is put some stickers on you, put a cuff around your arm, gives you a little hug on your arm, just to make sure that all of your vitals are good. I can do it both manually from my bag, but I can also hook you up to this monitor and make sure that you're all okay on this monitor. My IV equipment's right up here. 
in case I need it. I have my, my bags here that have saline in it, kind of like a water in it, just to make sure that anybody who needs an IV is in this cabinet. We have a monitor over here that controls everything inside of our unit. So I can turn the lights on and off through this. I can hook you up to oxygen here, just like I can hook you up to oxygen there. I can change the lights on here. I can make it hotter, I can make it colder. This is more oxygen stuff in case I need it. All of my equipment has a place to go. This is pretty much my morning routine. Every single day, that's what I do. Make sure all of my equipment's ready. Hey, my name is Landon Claver. I'm a firefighter paramedic here at Corian Township Fire and EMS. And today, I'm the FAO of this 2016 Rosenbauer fire engine. As you can see here, this is where I sit to drive the engine. There's lots of gauges and needles, and a lot of responsibility with this position here. Uh, we'll start off first right here with this passport system. This passport system allows the incident commander or the person in charge of the scene to know who's on this engine and where they could possibly be at inside of a structure on an incident. The back here is where some of the crew will sit, and you can see some of our gears up here, our air packs, and we also have headsets to communicate with each other inside of the cab because we all know the sirens can be pretty loud. On an incident or a fire, uh, this is where I'll be working and this controls the water that comes out of the fire engine and puts it into our hose. Uh, we have hose right here, which we refer to as cross lays or uh, you know, simple fire hose. Uh, this is 150 foot and this is 200 foot. And it allows us to reach a structure from the street and anywhere we might need to inside of uh, said structure. Here are the, the gauges and levers that we pull to give water to the said hoses above here. And we have a bunch of different valves and intakes, which allows us to get water from different sources or also give water back. Full of extra tools in case we need anything during an incident. Uh, right here is our county, our county board. We here have labeled sides of the structure. And if somebody is on the structure, we'll take that passport and put it here to make sure we know where everybody's at during the incident. On every truck, fire engine in the township, we have some spare bottles on the side just in case when we go inside and we need to change our bottle out for quick in and out of the service so we can get back into the uh, structure and reduce the hazards. We have some more hoses. This is what we call a portable monitor. This sprays a lot of water in a very short amount of time so if there's a big fire, we can set this up and it'll spray without us having to stay on the line so that we can get more people in different areas to try to put out the fire. On this truck, we carry 750 gallons of water in a tank, which gives us about five minutes if we pull a cross lay before we have to get water from a different source like a hydrant or maybe another truck, depending on the area that we're in. Right here is our fire hose. This is five inch. Uh, this is what we connect to those fire hydrants. Uh, it gives us a lot of water and is able to uh, sustain us during the incident. We have a 24 foot extension ladder with two sections and we have a 14 foot roof ladder that allows us to get on a roof. We also have some other tools here called a New York hook which allows us to pull ceiling and expose a fire if it's in the ceiling. On all, all of our engines we have uh, swift water rescue and ice rescue capabilities. Uh, with the river being here it's uh, very likely sometimes people get trapped in water and inside here we have uh, PFDs, which are personal flotation devices and throw bags to help try to get the victim or a person said stuck in uh, the water. We also have ice suits on all of our engines, which allow us to go into the ice and get somebody who is stuck in the ice. Overall, this engine has over 2,000 foot of hose, uh, has 750 gallons of water, and can pump at 1,250 GPMs a minute. Uh, this truck is very essential to our operations for firefighting day in and day out and gets us safely where we need to go. So by having self-contained breathing apparatus that we're breathing clean, fresh air uh, out of that bottle and also having our own individual face piece, that's the mask that goes over that the air hose gets connected to, we have eliminated, uh, once again, uh, one of the major causes of cancer in firefighters. This facility that we're standing in is actually where we repair our own self-contained breathing apparatus. Just uh, recently, we've upgraded, for example, the bottles 
They're now called 45 minute bottles. Usually means because of breathing hard uh, in the fire situation that we may get 20 minutes out of, out of a 45 minute bottle. That rating of 45 minutes is that we would just be standing still and breathing normally. Well, we're not breathing normally. We're usually crawling. We're usually doing some exertion. We're usually rescuing people. We're doing other things of that nature which consume a lot of that air a lot quicker. But this is the repair facility. And basically, if one of those self-contained breathing apparatus that's uh, on one of the fire trucks goes bad, we have our own technicians in the station that can get that piece in service or back in service very, very, very quickly. All of the extra fittings for the SCBA workbench, including some of it is very fine work, so we have lighted magnifying glass, and we have things like the extra batteries that go in that are part of both our communication and our ability to uh, have a warning device uh, if we're running very, very low on air, uh, called a pass device. One of our lieutenants who died at the age of 33 from cancer. And so we take the, the cancer situation very, very seriously. I'm Steve Kahn with the Colerain Fire Department and I will take you through our command unit here. And this is the vehicle that we use for our incident command, our initial incident command for uh, relatively small incidents. Um, house fires, entrapments, and things of that nature. Um, anything gets bigger than this that we would encounter, we would call in some additional resources, including a uh, large-scale Hamilton County command unit that uh, gives us a little bit more options when we're running a, an incident. So, first of all, it's a, uh, it's a pickup truck. It does carry some limited equipment, mostly for support and resources. We do have resource books and manuals that help us look stuff up, pre-planned books for specific uh, occupancies and buildings and businesses here in Colerain Township that uh, we've already gone through and we've pre-planned some information. We have several radio systems in here for communications, not only on the fire ground, but with Hamilton County Dispatch and additional resources that we might need in addition to our computer-aided dispatch system and our internet resources that we would be able to utilize. So as the incident commander of any type of an incident, what we call a multi-unit response, my job here is to try to communicate and coordinate all the actions as each unit and each crew arrives on the scene. As we look in here, we do have our uh, the chief's gears. We have the gear for our three battalion chiefs. We do have multiple sliding drawers for different command functions and for some specialized uh, resources that we might need on scene. All of our battalion chiefs are paramedics, so we do have some um, EMS equipment so we can still respond to EMS units as a first responder if we do have something or all of our ambulances are out. The number one name of the game here is to get resources on the scene, um, especially in patient care. So if I'm out doing my rounds or our units are out and I'm closer, I will still respond on, a, on an EMS incident so we can get the care to the patient the quickest. So now that we have seen what our daily duties are, it's time to go to the training site and see some of that being put into action. going to the training site and this is something that we do on a regular basis. While we're there we're going to simulate a structure fire and how that uh, operation takes place with multiple companies that are responding. In essence this is almost what you would see if one of your neighbors or your house were on fire. The building that we have is a multi-story building but we can use it either first floor, first floor, second floor or even for a larger building up to the fourth floor. The sides of the building we mark for our own safety purposes. So the front of the building is called the alpha side, the A side. And if you go around clockwise, then the side to our left is the Bravo side, the rear yard would be the Charlie side, 
and the fourth side, the right side, would be the delta sign. That's important because what you'll hear is as a firefighter may get uh, injured or hurt in a certain area and we have to send other crews to go in and help rescue that firefighter, they will give their exact location, that they're in a bedroom at the AB corner. That really means that that's where the front and the left side of the building come together. First in Engine Company takes what we call a supply line, and that is a large diameter hose from the fire hydrant to supply the engine. Even though the engine has several hundred gallons of water on it, that can be needed to be replenished continually for a large fire. So we always carry water with us on the truck, but we also have a fire hydrant that we catch so that we don't run out of water. Beyond that, we will stretch what's called a fire attack line, one or two. You'll see that in this particular case, one of the lines is blue and the other is orange. And you're gonna say, that's sort of strange. No, it isn't, because as those lines are stretched and the individual on the end of the hose wants water, they will call back to the engineer driver of the, of the, of the engine and say, charge the blue line or charge the orange line. And in that way, you don't accidentally have the wrong line charged prematurely. In addition to the engine companies, we always send a ladder and a rescue. Now a rescue is different from a paramedic unit. Heavy rescue has technical equipment on it and also has uh, equipment that is there to help rescue anybody in a building. The ladder usually stages so that it can go and place the aerial, which you will see, up against the building not only necessarily to open the roof for ventilation, but more to look at the roof for an inspection to see that that roof is safe for firefighters to be working under it. That's a very important thing because a lot of firefighters were hurt by structural collapse. So the next evolution that you see is going to be a rope rescue. This is something that happens all the time with regard to a car over an embankment or perhaps a rescue at one of our waterways like the Great Miami River. What you will see is that the technical rescue crews will set up uh, anchor points and these are large rods that are driven in the ground and then anchored besides with webbing and then from there a block and tackle uh, a couple hundred feet long will be attached to a Stokes basket, which is a very rigid uh, type cot that we will secure the victim in. And then once they're secured, tie the end of the rope uh, in a harness onto uh, the Stokes basket. and you will see how it takes oh. to pull that up the hill uh, so that the person is safely brought up without being jostled, uh, could, could be a, a fracture or a back injury, something of this nature, and then taken to the uh, waiting paramedic unit for transport to the hospital. So that's a glimpse into a day in the life of a firefighter. It's much more than just sitting around waiting for a, for a call to come in. We go out over 10,500 runs a year, averaging about 30 plus a day. Those are medic units, those are fire units, those are rescue units, those are all what we do. Really and truly, 
your Coring Township Department of Fire and EMS is the all hazards response. Whether it's a hazmat incident, whether it's a fire, whether it's an auto accident, we come. We're there when you need us, 24-7, 365.